Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to this week's card. Today I made kind of a scene card here with uh, one of the new sets from Stampin' Up's holiday catalog called Holiday Home. It's got a lot of really cool um, pieces to it to include a lot of different holidays. Um, and then I'm also using the Mama Elephant Femme Frames. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the inside frame from this die set, which I love by the way. It's kind of hard to find, so if you can grab it, you should grab it while you can. I'm going to die cut that out of some Nina Solar White cardstock. And then I'm going to take some Hero Arts Shadow Ink in Soft Granite. And I'm going to, there's three houses in this set. So I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to stamp it at the bottom here. And then I decided I wanted to have a building behind it. So I'm taking a post it and I'm going to stamp it there. And then I'm just going to cut around it and that's going to create a mask. So I'll place that right on there and I'm using the sticky portion of the post-it. So when I put it on there and then I'll take the other building and put it right there on the left. And so when I stamp it in that soft granite, I can pull off my post and it'll look like that house is behind that one. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna pop it up a little higher so it looks like I have three different homes but it's actually two. Um, and I'm gonna stick this one in the middle. So I'm gonna stamp this Memento Tuxedo Black and uh, there's a string of lights in this set and I'm taking some Stampin' Up! markers in different colors and I'm actually coloring my stamp. I'm just alternating between red, yellow, green, and blue and then I'll take the black to do the string and you huff on a little bit like, like with hot air and uh, that re-moistens the ink and then you can stamp it. This wreath also comes with a set and it has a few holes in it, so I just colored those in with the real red. Now I'm going to color this with Copics. I've got E40, 43, and 44. And as usual, um, I start off in these small areas with uh, the darkest color first. And uh, so I colored that E44 on the left hand side and on the top because you'll have a little shadow from the roof line. And now I'm blending that inward with E43 right now. And I always use my medium color on the right hand side uh, edge. Not the darkest, but the medium. And now I have E40 and I'm just gonna blend that all the way to the center. And then I forgot to do the hole right there in the wreath. Now for the windows, I'm gonna do Y15 first on the left and the bottom and then I'll fill the right hand side with Y11 which is my lighter color and then finally I'll take my Y17 and I'll just do a little itty bit in the lower left hand corner. Now I realized I forgot the window sills here so I'm just going to take E43 and also line the door with it and then E40 just to blend it out toward the right hand side. And then I forgot the top, so I put E43 on the top there, and then I also forgot the window, which I'm going to fill in with Y15. Now for the door, I decided on a red door, so I started with some R29, and then you can see I'm blending it in toward the middle with R27, and then finally R22. I really like this combination of reds. It gives a nice blend. Now for the rooftop, I'm just going to use two colors, C1 and C4. So I started with the C floor and then I'll blend toward the middle with the C1. And I'm working in parts because that way the ink stays wet and it can blend it easily. And you can see I put a little shadow where the chimney is. Now I'm going to cut that out and there's actually some framelits that come with this so you could buy the framelit and make it framelit, sorry, and make it easier and you don't have to cut it out by hand, especially if you think you might be doing multiple Christmas cards. Alright, I decided to go over this string of lights because it just didn't stamp as dark as I wanted. So I went over with a Copic liner for the black and then also all the different colors, the Stampin' Up! colors. Now this was the scrap piece left over from when I uh, die cut that middle portion out. And I'm just free handing some snow and I'm going to cut it out by hand. And it's going to be placed at the bottom. Now I'm just kind of figuring out where things are going to go. So I wanted to stamp this lamp post, and so I'm going to tape my bottom piece to my craft mat, and I want it to go on top of the snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly pull out the snow, and then I'm going to stamp it right there. But wouldn't you know it, 
it didn't stamp all the way and I thought about stamping it again but that never works out so <laughs> I decided to do what I usually do in this situation which is I get my stamp and my jig out I stamp it on there and then I line it up to make sure that when I stamp it again it'll go right on top of where I had it before and if you do it this way it always works out so anyway now that I've got uh, the the back portion of the lamppost on the base panel. I'm going to go ahead and use my stamp on my jig and now I'm going to move the base panel out of the way and I'm going to stamp it on top of the snow. And that way when I adhere my snow you'll see the two pieces and you won't be able to tell that I stamped them separately. Alright so um, I'm going to put, I've been doing this a lot lately, I take my Versa marker and I'm going to color it along the edge and then I have my Snow Sparkle by WOW. It's a stamp, it's a embossing powder with glitter in it and so it just gives a little sparkle where the snow is. Alright now I'm going to work on my background, the sky, and I take a piece of masking tape and I've got a three-quarter inch uh, circle punch and I'm just going to mask off the top and bottom of that and I'm using So Saffron ink and a sponge dauber to uh, color in my moon. And I like So Saffron because it's not too bright, it's kind of a muted yellow. Now um, I used the reverse image or reverse mask. Uh, now I'm going to actually cover the moon to do the sky. So I'm using tumbled glass and my ink foam applicator. And I'm just going to go all the way around the edge just to the edge of the houses and then I'm going to leave the rest white. So I'm going to go all the way around the top and the sides. And then I'm going to take chipped sapphire and a sponge dauber. And the sponge dauber is going to allow me to get a little bit more precise with my ink application. And I'm just going to do the very edges. And that will give me more of a night sky. Whereas I felt like with the tumbled glass it was a little bit more daytime. But the uh, chipped sapphire really makes it look like it's night. Alright, now I'm going to remove that mask and I've got uh, this Santa stamp which also comes with a set. I tell you this set has so many different stamps in it. Uh, and I've got some VersaFine ink and I'm going to stamp that right on top. And now it's time to glue my snow panel down. So I'm just going to use some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And I purposely made it larger so that I can sort of move it around a little bit if I needed to. And then I'm going to pop that house on there with some foam adhesive, just some dimensionals. And now I'm using a couple of Copic markers to add a little bit of dimension here. So the first one I used was C4 and then I went up close here so you could see I'm taking this C1 and I'm blending it out just a little bit more. Now I didn't realize my camera was still zoomed in here but I'm just adhering this panel to um, some black cardstock with about a sixteenth of an inch or maybe an eighth of an inch, I'm sorry, more like an eighth of an inch mat. And then I'm going to adhere that to um, my folded cardstock. And there's also sentiments for the inside from our home to yours at Christmas time, and so I stamp that on the inside. And then there's the outside all finished. Such a cute set, um, and I really liked the uh, soft granite for those homes in the background. It really makes the, the center house pop. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.